Hello everyone, welcome back to MixBuzz TV, mixing and mastering tutorials on YouTube. Today, part 4 of our ultimate compression tutorial, it's time to start talking about multiband compression. So what a multiband compressor does? A multiband compressor allows you to compress some specific areas of the uh, frequency range of a given element, where there is a single track like a bass or a vocal, or, you know, the whole mix. And um, it splits the signal in how many bands, and it allows you to compress each region individually. Most multiband compressors have uh, individual attack time and release time and, and range and ratios for, for each band, obviously. So you have a great deal of control over the, the whole spectrum and uh, over the individual bands. So first thing to say about multiband compression is uh, most people tend to think about multiband compressors as a mastering tool. Now, I don't agree with that. I think and I find myself using multiband compressor a lot more during mixing than mastering. Um, usually when you use a multiband compressor in mastering is because you have a problem. The mix has a problem, like a pretty significant one, uh, that you are somehow forced to use a multiband compressor to, to adjust it because you cannot go back uh, to the mix. That's what mastering uh, does. It works on a final mix, so you don't have the possibility to go back and tweak each element. But let's say you have a one note bass or uh, vocals that become harsh on a given spot, on a given frequency range. That is where you, you usually find yourself using a multiband compressor in mastering while in mixing uh, is more common, at least in my experience. And for example, one of the applications that I'm using uh, multiband compression more often is actually vocals and lead vocals, because human voice has problem areas and resonances that actually move around the spectrum a lot. They are not static. Uh, it's not like an instrument that when you play a note, that is the note, that is the frequency, and that is going to be the, the, the problem note for, for the whole song. So what happens usually is that you have a problem frequency area that is not a problem all the time. Maybe it's a problem on some, on some words or, or some parts of the song. So a static EQ Let's say, for example, you have a problem in the low mid area, a static Q will take out that frequency range the whole time and it might not work. In my, in my experience, it, it, a multiband compressor actually works a lot better. Let's take this vocals, which is not mixed, it's a raw track. She was the finest thing okay. that I ever did see. So let's say is already there around a 180 185 she was the finest thing that i ever did see i walked over to her there's a there's a little boxiness there's a little mud in there she was the finest thing but there is also a lot of energy a lot of a lot of body so if i cut it out with a static eq and i'm exaggerating the cut just for the sake of the example she was the finest thing that I ever did see. I walked over to her just to beg and to plead. Okay, I took out a lot of energy, a lot of body. Now, if I go to a multiband compressor and I take out the same, the same area. She was the finest thing that I ever did see. I walked over to her. Okay. So the technically what happens is the compressor it will lower down this region here the problem region let's call it for now but only when it builds up too much so it doesn't take the the, the body the energy of the vocals the whole time but only when uh, when when it's too much okay 
so this is another thing with the multiband compressor. I usually start with all the bands off. And even if I don't use them, uh, they are still there. They are still present and the filters uh, creates a phase shift. And if I'm not using the band, I actually bypass it. So let's start with the first one. Here, how smoother is the vocal with these band engaged without? She was the finest thing that I ever did see. With. She was the finest thing that I ever did see. Okay, it becomes actually warmer because there's less of that, you know, 6K information there. It actually seems a little, a little beefier because it's not that harsh, it's not that gritty, it's not um, too bright and scratchy. Let's solo this one and hear what it, where is at. She was the finest thing that I ever did see. Okay. I walked over to her. So it's around 3, 4K, and the reason is because in this pass here, let you hear the vocals without anything on it, bypass the whole thing. Ooh, gonna have a good time. Okay, in that who, uh, it, this range gets scratchy. Ooh, gonna have a good time. Okay, let's hear with. Ooh, gonna have a good time. It still has the drive, and you know, we, we like a little bit of distortion, saturation, probably from the preamp and everything, but it's not so scratchy. Ooh, gonna have a good time. Ooh, gonna have a good time. You see, I left the range pretty high, but the threshold is very high, so it just just when it gets again too much you know not something you would do with a static eq because this is like a very important range for the vocals you don't want to take it out all the time and one thing on vocals especially on lead vocals the multiband compression is the first thing that i do i might take out the 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 sub low i use the filters at the beginning but this is the first processing that i do the multiband compression because everything else after this it become easier Everything else after the multiband compression, like static EQ, for example, or, or regular dynamic control compression, or saturation, for example, or effects, it becomes a lot easier. You have to work a lot less because the vocal is already balanced. And um, the example is on the vocals, but it goes for anything else. And even the static EQ that comes after the multiband compression, if you use the multiband compressor to correct the imbalances, whether it's the S's or the plosive or the boxiness, after that, you can apply EQ to enhance instead of correct, okay? So the last band is this one. In this particular vocal, something I noticed is this frequency range. Actually, this, this was the first thing around 600 she was the finest thing that i ever did see i walked over to her this was uh, the, the the boxiness that i didn't like and if i don't remember wrong it should be this bit here we're gonna have a good time okay on the the word time that is where it, it becomes like obvious we're gonna have a good time we're okay. gonna have a good time listen to the eye of the time we're gonna have a good time that nasal sound it comes out very very obviously we're gonna have a good time while instead with this band on taking care of that frequency range you still have the tone of the singer because he has a beautiful tone and, and we want that. But we want to control 
this range because it sticks out on that particular word. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna have a good time. Okay. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna have a good time. This is very obvious. This this is like a big improvement that you you will not have the same result with the static EQ. Okay, an application that we can take a look at now is on bass, for example. Now, depending on the mix, um, what we want is, it could be probably to make the low end a little more solid. So let's say we do compress. We compensate for it. If you look at what the compressor is doing, the release time in this, um, in this case is very important because what you want you want probably a solid low end and uh, a solid sustain for the notes especially for the long notes so overcompensating the output of this band for what you're compressing so you're compressing let's say for 3 db and you're compensating for for 6 db you you should get a very solid low end but you know not all the time like with a static EQ not boomy all the time with a static EQ let's say for example this band here where we have the let's turn the volume up Well, we have the strings. They are poking out a little too much. And what you can do is with a very fast attack, because these transients here are gonna be fast, and with a pretty fast release, take them out. Okay. So you can see. You take out just just when the when the, the the strings hit the frets and you have that noise, but why wouldn't you do it with a static EQ? Because even if the bass has is energy pretty much in the low range, it has upper harmonics, and you don't want to take them out with a static EQ all the time. You just want this frequency here uh, to not to poke out. So. This is it for this part four of our ultimate compression tutorial. And we are gonna keep uh, looking at multiband compression in part five. If you have any question, feel free to send a message. Please like and subscribe and see you in part five.